All right, so this video is going to be mainly about why you should be using G-Sync right now, especially with this new Viper Astra meta, and why you need to uninstall the current driver and reinstall an older driver. So the newer NVIDIA drivers are terrible. There's so much latency and just so much crap going on. What you should do is you should uninstall your current driver using DDU. It's a program called Display Driver Uninstaller. You can search it on Google, you can find it, download it. What you need to do is you need to boot into safe mode. If you type in MS config, go to boot, check safe mode. Make sure you have it downloaded, boot into safe mode. Hit OK, restart your computer. This will boot into safe mode. Before you boot into safe mode, make sure that you have it installed and then you, when you go into safe mode, you come back into this MS config. Again, you just type MS config and you uncheck this when you're in safe mode. Because if you don't uncheck this, it's going to constantly loop in safe mode. You need to uncheck this when you, you're in safe mode. So, go into safe mode using this. Open DDU when you're in safe mode. You won't have any internet, most likely. You're going to hit options. You're going to check prevent downloads from drivers. Make sure you check this. If you don't check this, then when you boot back into Windows normally, it's going to just in install the NVIDIA driver from Windows. So make sure you check that. Then you're going to hit select device type, GPU. This will automatically hi highlight NVIDIA. Click clean and restart. Once that's done, you're going to be back in Windows with, you'll have no NVIDIA driver. So you're going to be in 60 hertz. It's going to feel like shit, obviously. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to download, you're going to go and find, you're going to go to this website here and you're going to download the NVIDIA driver that you need. So you're going to go choose what kind of card you have here, Windows driver type. If you're on 20H2 or just like Windows 10 Home Pro, you're going to download DCH and recommend it certified. If you're on Windows Server, you're going to download the standard one, but DCH if you're on Windows 10 Home Pro, anything like that. Hit search, you're going to look for 457.51, you're going to download it. Next what you're going to do is once it's downloaded, you need a program called 7-Zip. It's just a file extractor like WinRAR. Make sure you use 7-Zip, not WinRAR to do this. Right click, once you install 7-Zip it will appear here whenever you right click on files. Right click, 7-Zip, extract files. You can just hit OK, it will extract them just like this. What you're going to do is you're going to click, hold Control and A, that's highlight all. Hold control and click the display driver, MV container, uh, GeForce Experience, and these bottom four down here. Then you're going to hit, sorry, MV12. These here. We don't need MV container. Delete. You're going to left with these here. You're going to go into GeForce Experience. You're going to Click this, you're going to hold shift to privacy, like right below privacy policy, delete. So you have just privacy policy, swift shader, go all the way to here, right below the, right above the EULA, delete, go all the way down. Right after the last functional, you're going to click this one, go all the way down before license, delete, and then click the last one here and delete all this. You're left with this, you can pause it, I'm going to scroll slowly, these, these here. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to right click, you're going to create a shortcut. You're going to go into right click the shortcut, go to properties. At the end of the target here, you're going to hit space slash S. Hit apply, hit OK. What this is going to do is going to do a silent install. So when you double click on it, it's just going to silently install the NVIDIA driver in the background. Once that's installed, you'll be on 457.51. You're going to go to your NVIDIA control panel. Obviously, use the 3D image, use the advanced 3D image settings. You're going to put all your settings here. I'll go through mine. I leave anastropic filtering on application controlled because Valorant forces this no matter what. So, everything else off here. I monitor tech on G Sync. I have GPU selected here. Prefer, high, prefer maximum performance. Highest available. On, on, allow. High performance. On, on, off. And then I have V Sync on. Because with on plus boost and vsync and gsync, that's how they work together the best way. This on one, this on off. 
Next, under change resolution, obviously make sure you, you're under PC, select 1920, your refresh rate. Use digital vibrance and then adjust desktop size. Make sure you're on no scaling if you play native. Obviously, if you play stretched or something, full screen override. Display is always going to be better than GPU most of the time. Depends if you have a really crap display, you might actually want to choose GPU here if you have a really good GPU. So, but most of you will be selecting no scaling. Go to set up G Sync, make sure it's on enable for windowed and full screen mode. That's it. That's applying those settings and that's that will give you the highest possible frame rate right now, especially even if you don't play with G Sync, let's say. Um using if you use fixed refresh or you just don't have a G Sync monitor. 457.51 will give you a way bigger boost in frames. It's just a better driver overall for frames and even input lag. Next is going to be talking about G-Sync and why if you have a G-Sync monitor, you should be using G-Sync. And this is the reason why. G-Sync, if you're under your monitor's refresh rate, so if I have a 360 hertz monitor, and naturally I'm getting bet like between 0 and 360 frames, like I'm not pushing past 360 frames. G-Sync, you should be a hundred, you should 10,000% be using G-Sync. The only reason why people disable G-Sync is because they can pass their monitor's refresh rate. If your average FPS in the game, not like when you spawn bots, not when you spawn into the range, in game, if your average FPS is below your monitor's refresh rate and you have a G-Sync monitor, turn G-Sync on. Turn G-Sync on, turn V-Sync on, and go to on or on plus boost in game. Reason for this is no matter what, all these frame fluctuations that are happening because of all the Viper and the Astra and everything, if you're running G Sync, you're not going to have, it's going to smoothly adjust to that frame rate. Like, let's say you have like, you're playing on a 240 hertz monitor and you're getting like, let's say like 200 and like, let's say you're getting around 200 frames and then fights you're dropping down to 100. And you can feel it. You can literally feel that massive drop. When you're using G Sync, it's gonna sync those frames up, and you're not gonna, you're, it's not gonna feel as bad. It's gonna be pretty smooth with all these frame drops that are happening. That's what G Sync does. It matches, it matches your frames up with your your GPU and your monitor perfectly in sync. So you're not gonna feel all that lag that's happening, and it's gonna smoothly, it's just gonna smooth out your game. There's no reason not to use G Sync if you're under your monitor's refresh rate or like very close to it. The only reason you shouldn't be using G-Sync if you have 144 or 240 hertz monitor is if you're blowing past that fucking hertz. Like if you're on 144 and you're getting like average 250, 300 plus in game, then no, obviously don't. But I just, that's where you just can't find a cap. Like that's where you cap your frame rate, obviously. But, and then same thing for 240. If you're blowing past the frame rate that you're getting like 350, 400 plus, 100% don't cap it. And yeah, leave it uncapped or cap in game and don't run G Sync. But let's say you're running a 240 hertz monitor and you're barely pushing, like in game, you're getting around 200 to even 300. Like I'd say probably 320 would be your top max there. If you're getting anything below that, 320, you should 100% be using G Sync. And it's just going to, especially again, I can't stress it enough stress this enough is especially with all the crap that's going on with Viper, Astra and all the shit that's happening in the maps it's way better for you to use G-Sync and all these people that comment and they're just like oh but like why would you enable V-Sync? V-Sync causes lag go watch my G-Sync video I explain it in depth and I'm going to explain it right here real quick if using V-Sync V-Sync only kicks in when you pass your monitor's refresh rate so G-Sync kicks in when you're under your monitor's refresh rate. So as long as you're capping your frames under your monitor's refresh rate, you're always staying in G-Sync range and you're never touching V-Sync range. That's the easiest explanation I can give and it's, it's, it's pretty simple if you really think about it. So what Reflex does is it acts as an in-game limiter and it's going to cap your frames below your monitor's refresh rate so you're never getting the input lag of V-Sync because you're never passing your monitor's refresh rate. And you're always staying within G-Sync, which again is barely adds any input lag at really high refresh rates. As you move down on the spectrum of lower refresh rates, it's very, very small. Again, 240 is pretty small. 144 is 
small-ish, let's say that. You can look it up online and actually see, but again, it's not, it, the trade-off right now, especially in this meta, is 100% worth it. That's all I have to say, and if you have a G-Sync monitor, really, really consider using G-Sync. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, leave it in the comments.